the police officers uh, are there, and that's their decision as to where they will be and where they won't. I don't direct where police officers go or what they do. But police officers are there to protect the safety of the people experiencing homelessness and to protect the safety of city staff, because there have been some instances in which that safety has been called into question. So they're there to keep things safe, and frankly, if they can stay back and not get themselves directly involved, I'm sure that's what they'll do. They don't get involved in things they don't have to get involved in. But with respect to uh, you know, people characterizing it in the way that they, that they are, I would just say this. The greatest favor I think we can actually do for the people experiencing homelessness who have issues uh, in their lives that I think most of us can hardly imagine is to, to have them come indoors to a safe place where they can get the kind of support that they need. They are not getting healthy, safe supports in places where there are fires and other things going on and where it just isn't healthy to be living in a public park besides the fact that it is illegal to live in a public park. We, we need to persuade those people and we've tried everything. We have made the 20,000 visits to talk to each and every one of those people uh, to persuade them to come indoors. And already this morning, some of the people in Trinity Well Belvins Park have agreed to come indoors so that they will have safe housing. They will get the supports they need. The, the, we, are, we are as compassionate in the city and have done as much uh, for this group of people uh, as you could possibly imagine, including the biggest push probably ever in the history of the city on building more supportive housing with the help, I should add, of the federal and provincial governments. But we still have a long way to go. I'll point out one more thing. There is a situation that has existed in these parks for some time uh, where there are far more of these structures taking up space in the public parks that could otherwise be devoted to the use of the public, including kids and families uh, with summer programs that are yet to come. There are far more of the structures than there are people. And we have been obstructed, I will use that word, we've been obstructed and prevented from even taking the empty tents, empty tents that are in no use or empty structures that exist in the park which are not supposed to be there, we have been prevented from taking those out. And when we asked, even if we could just move some of the empty tents, let alone move people, uh, we were told, no, we could not do that. We were told that by, by protesters, effectively, that just said they couldn't do that. And I'm sorry, I cannot accept a state of affairs where a group of people like that determine that they have the right to say what is going to be done in our public parks and what isn't, and that even in the cause of standing up for the people who are experiencing homelessness, who we're standing up for too, by offering to provide them all kinds of supports, that uh, they have the right to tell us we can't take empty tents and empty structures that are unsafe and unhealthy out of those parks. So there does come a time when the enforcement people have to make their own decision as to when they have to take some action to uh, say that we can't let this situation continue because of the fires, because of the threats to safety and health, and they have done so this morning. And I think they're doing it in as measured and balanced a way as they can, and I support uh, that action, and I hope that people will cooperate with that and decide that it is time uh, to take a step other than just having the status quo uh, stay in place forever and ever uh, with, with, with dozens and dozens and dozens of tents and structures empty sitting in those parks.